working for Dan was like being in an abusive relationship. There's a lot of abuse that happens. I, I worked with an incredibly emotionally abusive producer. How safe can any kids be in that environment? Dan Snyder, you better be scared. Your downfall is here. Dan Schneider and other producers are finally getting exposed. There's a documentary with new former staff and a mysterious child star who are ready to share their stories for the first time. Nickelodeon is going to have a hard time covering up this one, so let's get into it. It's about time that we're getting a legit documentary about Dan Schneider and exposing his antics. We've been talking about Dan Schneider, a former Nickelodeon producer of some of your favorite shows like iCarly, Zoe 101, Drake and Josh. We've been talking about him for a while. I believe my most viewed video is about him. But now the streaming services are taking it seriously and they have interviewed some people who are going to share new information about how bad this man really is. I have to tell you, I was shook to learn that they are actually making a story about this because Nickelodeon has been protecting Dan for so long. So there's no production company associated with Nickelodeon or Paramount who's going to support a project like this. But Investigation Discovery has unveiled their trailer for Quiet On Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, which is a four-part docuseries revealing the toxic work conditions behind children's shows in the 90s and early 2000s, those specifically from Dan Schneider. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you may know that I'm close friends with Alexa Nicholas, who was on Zoe 101. She actually told me that she was going to be in this, and I was so excited for her because finally someone's taking it seriously. And it's one of the reasons I am excited for this is because I know Alexa, I have talked to her about this working on this project and you know, she's telling me it's going to be a win. So I am excited. It's not going to be the bluff that we've heard before. It's people who have never shared their stories about this man. And I think it has more to do with just Feet. For a press release, Quiet On Set says, On set, it was an insidious environment rife with allegations of abuse, sexism, racism, and inappropriate dynamics with its underage stars and crew. Some of the stars included in this series are cast members from all that, including Giovanni, Kyle, Brian, Katrina. We've got writers from The Amanda Show. And then, of course, we've got Alexa Nicholas sharing her experience working on Zoe 101. When it comes to Dan Schneider, people liked him until he left. Left Nickelodeon. I mean, we've been blowing him up on the internet, but people in the industry, they let it slide and they actually praised him for making people like Josh Peck and Drake Bell stars. I mean, Miranda Cosgrove, I love her, so I'm a fan. And um, Ariana Grande is obviously very successful, but <laughs> Jamie Lynn Spears, she goes in the Drake Bell category. Interviews explain that working for Dan was like being in an abusive relationship, dealing various complaints filed about the showrunner over the years. So let's go ahead and react to some of this trailer. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what's interesting too is that we hear a lot about like the stars treatment, what the stars had to do on, you know, camera, these like nasty things with the feed and just again appropriate squirting on the face and like, you know, the list goes on. You watch my past videos, but now we're hearing from a lot more of the staffers, the people who actually took the correct approaches as well as far as HR and trying to get this man exposed, but they never had support. Made me they showed a picture of Brian Peck. If you've not heard of him before, he worked on the Amanda show. And then he was convicted of harming allegedly, allegedly Drake Bell, allegedly. Um, uh, yeah. And then um, he went to jail and then he ended up working for Disney on Zack and Cody. He's a bad guy. I've got a video talking about exposing Brian Peck. Definitely go check it out. No relation to Josh Peck, but it's really close to home. You know, it's kind of kind of random environment. Okay, so they're obviously talking about other people uh, in addition to Dan Schneider. I don't know if they're trying to accuse him of having any of these crimes. There's obviously nothing that has been reported, like nothing on the record. Um, but, you know, he worked very closely with these people, which I think suggests... Gosh. Oh my gosh, guys. I just had everything just, just came to my mind. Okay, I'm just going to like free think for a second because I've had a lot of interaction with Drake Bell. So this trailer was very this is my first time watching it by the way um i saw little clips but you know but drake bell was okay so allegedly drake bell is the victim of allegedly brian peck um that is something that we have uncovered on this channel it's something that drake and i have had interactions about and it's not gotten pretty and it's something that he hasn't really ever spoken about because he was i think 14 16 like at the amanda show 
And from my recollection, they were drugged. Like the, the victim was drugged, which would be um, Drake Bell in this case. I mean, Nickelodeon tried to make up for what happened at the Amanda show by giving Drake and Josh their own show. So that's why, you know, Drake and Josh came about. I mean, granted, Drake Bell was a very talented child actor. I received a text message that if you can go back through all my videos, because I've posted all the text messages, I believe. I received a text message that when they wanted to meet up with me in Virginia, like when I lived in Virginia, so this would have been before December 2021. I want to say it was like November 2021, and or maybe it was October, but they were pretty upset that I made a video saying that I felt harassed by them because they got my phone number. He was tweeting out at, with his like, I think... I don't know, two million or four million followers on Twitter, like tweeting out at me. Like, I don't really use Twitter. So like, I just was feeling very overwhelmed. They were using my first name. They were just like, kind of, anyways, they wanted to meet up with me and they said they wanted to talk and they had something really big coming about and that I would want to be a big part of it and be the most views I would have ever gotten or something along those lines. You guys can go back and look. And I wonder if they've been working on this project and Drake Bell is going to share what happened with Brian Peck. Now that's just me like just you know free thinking right there just because of like the interactions i've had but i just had that click like wait i wonder if this is the big thing that they've been working on for a while now so since it would have been like a couple years now or they i meant by him and his wife because they were both texting me um but he's been working on and now he's maybe sharing and that's who the empty spot is i I don't necessarily know, but that just watch that. That's my prediction right there. This person commented, I've been waiting 17 years for today. Oh, Alexa ate that. One person said, this is why Alexa, Nicholas, and Jeanette McCurdy are so important. I wonder if Jeanette McCurdy would, um, would go in there. Someone said the empty chair at the end has to be someone major. Someone said Amanda Bynes. Someone else said, pretty sure Drake Bell. I agree. Hours after this was published, a spokesperson for Dan Schneider reached out to Variety with the comment. Dan cared about kids on his shows, even when their own families unfortunately did not. He understood what they were going through and he was their biggest champion. The fact is of many of the kids on the show are put in un tenable position of becoming a breadwinner oh so you're trying to say that the family was pressuring the children they were the breadwinner so these kids had terrible families and dan was like just doing his job and trying to parent he said there are many levels of standards executives lawyers teachers and parents everywhere on set at every time every day however it's a hard place to be a kid and nobody knew that better than dan so clearly he is completely like denying everything and trying to brush this off and i wonder if this is going to be more of a Brian Peck, Drake Bell piece opposed to like a Dan Schneider one, but they're going to loop in Dan Schneider because Dan Schneider is definitely the, you know, he he's way more popular than Brian Peck ever was because Brian Peck was just like a writer or like a, a prop guy from the Amanda show. I have been waiting for this. I've heard so many creepy stories about this guy from Nickelodeon, Dan Schneider. I think it's going to be like blanket about how child stars had a bad experience in the Nickelodeon space in general, but then they have one person that they're not showing their face or their real voice and they're going to tell some sort of secret. Now this secret could be Drake. Um, Jeanette McCurdy has written her book, so I feel like we kind of gotten a lot of her secrets unless she has more. I mean, I think she was working on a part two, so this could be part of that. Though um, I've always wanted to interview Drake. I thought it'd be interesting. So maybe I'll text him and ask him like once he does promo for this, if he does it, because it would be interesting to talk about this because I am oddly well-versed in that story because I've read over all the documents and it was extremely traumatizing. And if Drake is speaking out like about this, then I don't know. There is some props to him because he went through literal hell. When I watched the trailer uh, for that upcoming documentary, this guy right here was getting slimed. Open mouth slimed. Ugh. Every time I watch this, I'm like, ugh, this is a crime on its own. The amount of times they've gacked people when they unsuspectingly did probably did not want to be gacked. Gack in the mouth is a no for me. If I was ever a Nickelodeon star and they tried to do that to me, I would be freaking out. I mean, imagine the contact, you know, comes out, you're inhaling it. Like what she said, I feel like it would go right up my nose. Um, oh, and your hair. Oh, if you had blonde hair, you're done. Send a bill to Nickelodeon because you would be done. But this is a really important moment that they're making this documentary just because it's sharing a different side of the industry. We hear a lot of like direct pieces about like one person in particular, like an R. Kelly or, you know, 
that such. So to cover like kind of this basis and even, you know, Alexa's story, it's really like exciting. So I can't wait to watch it. Comment below if you guys are going to be watching it because now everyone's reacting and I'm curious to see if they're going to, you know, release little tidbits on the way to the documentary. Here are some reactions from people. This person writes, I can't believe after all these years he's running free and Nickelodeon is an accomplice. This person writes, hopefully it should shed some light to help the victims and send the creep to jail. Ooh, looking forward to it. This person writes, the fact the logo is a giant foot is the biggest red flag we never saw, which I'm like, I didn't see it as a kid, but yeah, since doing my research, I did notice. It makes you realize that Nickelodeon is on his side and like the last report we saw of Dan, he was supposedly working again. So I don't know why Nickelodeon continues to protect him. They were very upset whenever we protested in front of Nickelodeon with Alexa and for E Predators. So they are definitely supporting him and I'm interested if they're going to have a statement because a lot of it includes their employees. I mean, even more than just Dan Schneider alone. So comment below what you guys think. Are you going to be watching? And I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.